Although I'm a little bit late to do this video, thanks to the Oscar Movie Marathon, but here it is, my Amazon Prime Day Blu-ray haul of 2024. This was definitely a better um, performance than it was last year. I think last year I only did five due to a budget reason. But I managed to do a better round for this time because I was really good on the budget this time. But there is also one thing I do want to mention, a little update status on my Blu-ray collection a bit. I have changed um, what this shelf is right now where all my Criterions are, are now down here where I used to film it. Now, um, because this bottom center here was kind of bent a bit, whoops, <laughs> that kind of scared me a bit, and there you, and one of the Blu-rays is stuck. <laughs> wow, what a great start to it, I'll fix that uh, once I turn out the camera, but uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, we've got a bunch of movies here, but there is one movie here that is not part of the Prime Day, because I kind of had mentioned this in the last um, Blu-ray update, and it came in like a week after I did the video, and we're going to start this up with Foxcatcher. Um, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. I actually watched it, um, I think around the same time as the Screen Actors Guild Award, uh, not this past award season, but last award season. Um, and it was very entertaining movie, but this is obviously notable as... One of the three movies um, since this picture expansion in 2009 to get a Best Directing nomination, but did not make it in the Best Picture lineup. The others being uh, Cold War and Another Round. So this is the only movie that is not part of Amazon Prime Day, but it just took a while for the movie to get here on my collection in the last order that I had. So um, Steve Carell, very haunting performance as him as, um, I think, who, Jean Du. I forget what the name was, but I think I remember his first name was Jean, um, which is his only Oscar nom Steve Carell's only Oscar nomination to date because he's obviously bigger on the television side. Obviously, Mark Ruffalo, Channing Tatum, of course. Uh, yeah, I know there are some people that think this is an extremely cold movie. I get, I can understand where people are coming from, but I just really love the chills for this movie. So now we come into the two masterpieces of my collection that have been added. Baby Driver from 2017 by Edgar Wright, and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind from 2004 by Michelle Gondry, written by Charlie Kaufman, starring Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet, Kirsten Dunst, Mark Ruffalo, and Elijah Wood. And obviously this features a cast, though you do have um, Jamie Foxx, but you also have got uh, these two people that we do not talk about, but it was just wrong timing, especially for Baby Driver being the release of the same year as the Me Too movement. Baby Driver, definitely an action crime masterpiece. It was just blown away of just how the soundtrack really played a key aspect to the movie. And Eternal Sunshine, really figuring out this entire scenario of this kind of sci-fi aspect into the movie. Now, it's odd because I'm not usually a big Charlie Kaufman fan because I didn't like being John Malkovich. I hated Anomalisa. And I think I also wasn't in on um, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Um, all three movies he wrote with an Anomalisa he directed with Duke Johnson. Um, even, uh, but I did like Adaptation um, because it was kind of like a fictionalized story of, his, of himself with his fictional twin Donald Kaufman. But this was like the movie that kind of really took him as a writer, per, per se. He has directed a couple of films like Synodosh, New York, and I believe, I forget what was the horror film when he just released earlier this decade. I forget what it was called, but um, I have not seen that. So, uh, But these two are definitely worth it in my collection, especially Eternal Sunshine. Now we have the two biopics I've gotten. One from 2011, My Week with Marilyn, and from 2014, um, Selma. A very long very long for me to take get this movie in my collection because I actually did so, watch Selma in my ninth grade history class. It was like still a few months fresh after it came out and it was like probably the first legit major Oscar best picture film I've seen. Like if you're not counting uh, Toy Story 3 or up, um, this is definitely one of the very first like live action ones to be precise because I was still kind of used to animation but this one um and after a revisit earlier this decade it just like 
made me so angry at the South, especially at George Wallace, like, why racism should not be a good thing. Um, and David Oyelowo definitely should have been nominated for Best Actor over probably Eddie Redmayne in The Theory of Everything or Michael Keaton Birdman or Benedict Cumberbatch in The Imitation Game. Bradley Cooper and Steve Carell, fine. It's just him and Jake Gyllenhaal were not nominated. As for my week with Marilyn, now, um, a lot of people might... This is a very interesting thing I want to talk a little bit about. The recent Marilyn Monroe biopic, Blonde, um, from 2022... To, uh, I hated that. Um, many people could see view it as like an anti hashtag Me Too movement, or if like if in an alternate universe, if you would say, oh, Harvey Weinstein would have produced Blonde. Well, not defending himself as a person, but him as a producer, he did produce this film, and this shows the real interpretation of my week with Marilyn of this one particular setting of having a. A little story about a third assistant director, which is actually true of one of the productions of Laurence Olivier's movies, I forget which one it was, um, and just shows the real struggling Marilyn Monroe has as a person. We don't see her as the person we all love, like in Some Like It Hot, or even the song Diamonds Are Girl's, Girl's Best Friend. So this is like the real interpretation. Michelle Williams definitely should have won her Oscar. I think Kenneth Branagh should have also won his Oscar as Laurence Olivier. Not really defending Weinstein himself. I mean, I did revoke him as a Best Picture nomination when I put this in my personal Oscar lineup for 2011. I'll even do the same thing if Gangs of New York um, gets nominated for Picture when I see that film. So, yeah. Um, definitely, I think this is definitely should have been the Best Actress trope, not Meryl Streep in The Iron Lady or Christopher Plummer in Beginners. Now we come into three movies that are way off from each other. One Best Picture nominated movie, one international non-English film, and one animated film. So the center one, of course, is Steven Spielberg's War Horse from 2011. I actually really did enjoy this one, but this is actually one of the bigger Blu-ray sets, actually. Um, this is the uh, Blu-ray DVD digital copy, and I think there is like... A big Blu-ray pack, I believe. Yeah, you get two Blu-ray discs. That's why it's kind of a bigger Blu-ray set. And, uh, I'm not usually... Like, I don't know what it is, but sometimes movies about a horse really kind of stands out to me. Not just with this film, but also um, Seabiscuit, which was in the last regular Blu-ray update, and also uh, The Black Stallion that is on the Criterion Collection. A very masterpiece, of course. Like, definitely like a, one of my favorite Oscar... And, um, cri favorite Criterion movies in the, from the 1980s. The, but the, one of the, excuse me, the best, eight, one of the best 80s films that is in the Criterion Collection. That's what I meant to say. So, War Horse kind of fits in that trend, I would say. Better Days, this took me a little bit to get because it was kind of a little bit expensive for a while. Uh, this is the Hong Kong film that was nominated for International for 2020, losing out to another round, which I still have not gotten that Blu-ray yet because it's still a little expensive. Uh, this did took a while for me. Um, I knew it wasn't because I think this is the poster for the film. So, And this is actually a movie, um, one of the best modern movies on the subject of bullying. That's what the movie's really about. Like an interesting bull story about bullying and just like a powerful message it has. Especially not just for the, uh, especially for one line that is um, the English line, I believe, for the film. Because um, our female lead would be later an English teacher for um, a class. And, well, obviously we look at her youth days and she meets this guy who would later become, like, her kind of personal bodyguard secretly. Um, because he's kind of like a, an outsider. Like, not in the world. It, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. Like, she's a schoolgirl. He's not. Um, she gets bullied around and he kind of is, like, the bodyguard for her. Because they met when they were both beaten, beaten, were both been beaten up by, I think, a certain group or something like that. But that was, these two had a massive connection. It's actually my personal Oscar lineup for adapted screenplay. It didn't make in the anime and international or documentary slot, um, but it would have been definitely very close. And then finally, a movie I've been wanting to get in my Blu-ray collection for quite some time, Wreck-It Ralph. Um, I did got the old one, the one with the good cover. I didn't get one with the current one. I still need to find a good cover of the of the original release for Zootopia so I can get rid of the lazy cover or give it to my sister, I would say. Uh, 
I had a blast with Wreck-It Ralph when I saw this, I think, in 2013. Um, just an amazing experience about a story of a video game character, a video game villain that wants to change, and he hates the, where he's at. It's kind of like he's kind of like coming of age or stuff like that, but a coming of an age story for an adult who is like 30 years old, if you're going by um, 30 years old by a game standard. So, um, the, as you saw in my personal Oscar lineup of 2012, I have an Elmas everywhere. All four of the main actors got acting nods. Um, it definitely should have won for Best Animated Feature over Brave. I don't know why it didn't. I'm not, I didn't like the sequel, Ralph Breaks the Internet. I really did not like that movie, so you're not going to see that in my collection. But this is the Spiria one, and I would say Ralph Breaks the Internet does not need to exist. I do want to apologize real quick that it, the lighting might not be that great because um, it's supposed to rain here in a few minutes, maybe a storm, I guess. But I want to get these done before uh, that happens. So uh, now we are into two documentaries that have been added to my collection. I don't have much documentaries in the regular Blu-ray side, but now um, I do have a couple for Criterion, but not as much. But these two I managed to get um, what I think should have won Best Documentary Feature of 2011 and 2022. Helen Back Again and A House Made of Splinter. So Helen Back Again was my number two Oscar movie of 2011 behind the artist. Just about this war soldier who is recovering from being... I forget which war was the movie in. I, uh, yes, I'm gonna... Okay, set around the Taliban of this army man and there's... <laughs> that blue ray, I'll get that. Um, um, so... It's been a while. Um, it's just he got injured and then he's back at home with his, I believe, girlfriend or fiance or what. It, it sets like in 2009 and it's definitely like one of the greatest war films of this generation. Like, obviously, especially being a documentary and it's kind of focusing on his recovery stages before he goes back to war or even all the um, footages of the war and when he is at home is just really heartbreaking and you really feel support for him throughout his journey. I forgot the person's name on this. Don't think it says here, so... Yeah, it doesn't say his name, unfortunately, unless we can look. Nope, it doesn't, unfortunately. I, I really wish I had the name here, but I don't have the time to at the moment. And as for A House Made of Splinters, this is a pre-Russian-Ukrainian war documentary uh, this was nominated, of course, for Documentary Feature, la not this past season, but the previous year. In my opinion, it should have won, and I believe was the only nominee of that year that I did like. That also happened with me this year with 20 Days in Mariupol, which that film is not on Blu-ray. It's only on DVD at the moment. Hopefully it does get a Blu-ray release. Um, this is definitely more about... Uh, this one's very lighthearted. It's about specifically... Um, Kind of like, not really an orphanage per se, but it's about all these children in this uh, kind of like not really orphan facility because a lot of their parent because all these children are waiting to see if their parents are going to be losing custody of their kids. Because there's kind of a law that's in Ukraine about this scenario. And if they, and the only way for them to prevent them from being adopted or uh, specifically um, sent to an orphanage if the parents come and visit them and there are some lighthearted moments there are some um s sad moments that you feel sorry for basically all these kids it's really a very saddened movie as well um it's just that in 20 days in Mar this being a pre-russian ukrainian war documentary and then 20 days in mariupol followed by this it's just wow uh, even though we're not talking about that film, this is this should have won Best Documentary Feature over Navalny, in my opinion. And finally, what I would say the biggest one for this year's um, Blu-ray collection update, I know, I think the very first, I don't know what was the, I think the first one, I believe, or was it the second one was the Willy Wonka one, but this is kind of like, not really much of a follow-up to that, but kind of a little bit of a, a little downgrade, I would say, but still pretty big, I would say. And that is the Born Trilogy. The Born Identity, the Born Supremacy, and the Born Alternata. I did watch the Born series um, a few, uh, like a month or so ago, because um, 
I am obviously doing this Oscar movie marathon of the 2000s decade, and my bonus film for 2007 is The Bourne Alternatum, and won all three technical categories was nominated, and the only Bourne film to ever be nominated at the Oscars, and won all three of them. So I did watch all three of them, plus The Bourne Legacy and Jason Bourne. Identity and Supremacy are a great two-part movie. It's just like, you kind of really feel support for... Um, born specifically even though that's not his real name but it's just like throughout the journeys and you just really hate on pretty much the people that are trying to go and attack or even kill him let alone the assassins that he faced in for the movies even the one for legacy for um, germany renner's character and you also feel a connection with um, the love story like in identity and then kind of very heartbroken in the su and supremacy bit, more kind of a relationship with one of the heads of the time, I think played by um, Laura Linney, I believe, or is that Joan? No, Joan Allen, I believe. I, I got confused, it was Joan Allen in this one. And then alternating, you have David Strait Theron playing a fantastic villainous role in the movie, and it's just like, wow, he just really wants born down. And... It really was a fantastic conclusion to the trilogy. It was really that impactful. As for the other two films, Legacy and Born, Legacy sucks. Um, it was a completely pointless movie. It was only needed for the last... The only reason why Legacy was exists was for the last scene of the movie to update the status of Ultinatum, because a bit of Legacy took place around the same time as this film. And then for Jason Bourne, kind of pointless as well. I kind of already knew uh, one of the characters was going to get killed off immediately in Jason Bourne just because I knew where things were going to go. It went a little bit downhill. There is talks of the sixth movie, but we are not sure that's going to happen because if it does, it might get worse. But if you want to stick with the, uh, any Bourne series, just stick with the trilogy. Unless if the sixth one's really good, then you might have to watch Legacy and Jason Bourne or just skip Legacy because it's just pointless. And that's basically it for my Amazon Prime Day Blu-ray haul of 2024, plus Foxcatcher, I would say. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is definitely going to be a little bit of an expansion to the Blu-ray collection, of course. Um, do apologize if you hear the fan. It is, of course, a humid week I'm recording this. So um, let's see how many more movies I can get um, to Blu-rays, especially some of the more recent films from my 2023 marathon that I can get. Hopefully, by the end of this year, maybe, hopefully, we can do a regular Blu-ray collection video. We'll just see how far I can get to fill that shelf in particular.